He's heard it all before. You're a pastor. You're not supposed to get political. You shouldn't be talking about these issues, so just stay out of politics and stick to preaching the gospel. Life, marriage, sexuality, borders, ethnicity, these things aren't political. They're biblical. God's Word has much to say about the culture we're living in. This is Our Watch with Tim Thompson. Well, hey, everybody. Happy Sunday to you. Um, I'm Tim Thompson, Senior Pastor of 412 Church in Temecula Valley. Glad to be with you on the Sunday, bringing the Word of God into your life. Truly hope this is a blessing for you. With me, as always, is Jake Porter. Jake is the Assistant Pastor at 412 Church in Temecula Valley. Pastor Jake, always a pleasure to be with you. Yeah, it's always great to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. We're, we're in 2 Corinthians, making our way through, um, almost done with it. And we're going to be in Chapter 13 for those that want to follow along in their Bible. Today, we're going to be talking about testing ourselves, yeah. testing our Christianity, and examining our own lives. I think that's important for us to do. We're going to see in, in the scriptures why that's important, but we are going verse by verse, chapter by chapter, giving expository teaching through the Word of God. Uh, we see that is very important at 412 Church, and I'm teaching the adults typically. Typically, you're teaching the junior hires and high schoolers. Same points, um, same section of scripture. We do that very deliberately because what we want is parents going out after church, having conversations with their kids and, and ask them what they learned in church. And hopefully, uh, though, you know, that's developing good conversations between the parents and the, the kids because the, the world's definitely trying to indoctrinate the kids. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. The world's got their own version of truth and and what they think is right and they want everybody to believe what they think is right and uh as believers we need to know that the only thing that's right is god's word yeah and that is the truth yeah you can't so, have your truth and right. my truth right it is that's what they say uh, you have your truth i'll have my truth but then when we tell them what our truth is they'll say oh well that's not right yeah yeah, yeah, so it's it's so hypocritical of them and then they'll call us hypocrites it's hilarious to watch their their illogical logic yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it's so easy to blow holes in their arguments, you know, but but our, our young ones, they need to be trained up to know how to spot these things and, and how to talk about it. So that's what we, we do. We did preach a message about this topic of examining ourselves. Again, Second Corinthians chapter 13 is where we're going to spend our time today. But we, we preached a message on it. We're going to listen to a clip from it and then we'll come back and discuss it. So take a listen to this. Today, what I want to do as, we, as we're going to finish chapter 12 and just get into the beginning of chapter 13, I want you to be able to walk away from church and answer a very important question for yourself. And that question is, am I really a Christian? Am I, am I truly a believer in Jesus Christ? And the reason it's important is because there's a lot of people that do what I call fly the banner of Christianity. Oh, I'm a Christian. And you ask them, hey, why are you a Christian? How do you know you're a Christian? And if you died today on the way home, where are you going? Are you going to go to heaven? Yeah, I hope so. A Christian doesn't say, I hope so. A Christian says, I know where I'm going. And how do you know? How do you know that you know that you know? And that's, that's my hope and my goal today as we, as we get through this. I want to leave you with that challenge of answering for yourself, are you really, truly a Christian? And it's not just me that wants to challenge you in that. It is throughout the Word of God that we would test ourselves, that we would examine ourselves, examine our own lives. In fact, we're going to have communion later on in the service, and as we do that, one of the things that Paul was told by the Lord in, in 1 Corinthians 11, he says that we are to examine ourselves and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. The whole idea, and I say this, if you've been here when we have a communion service, I always say that you're not supposed to eat and drink the elements in an unworthy manner or you're eating and drinking judgment upon yourself. So the whole idea is you examine your own life. You test your own faith. In fact, in Lamentations chapter 3, verse 40, we're set, it's told, uh, let us test and examine our ways. Let us turn back to the Lord. And, and those are just a couple of 
areas, you'll see another area in the scripture that we're in today telling us to examine ourselves and test ourselves. So there is a, a true need for this, and it is something that we should be able to answer for. When we're told to, to be ready and able to give an answer for the hope that lies within you. Are you going to heaven? Yes, I am. Why? And you need to be able to tell somebody why. Yeah, you need to be able to tell somebody why. You know, you need to be able to give a reason for the hope that lies within you. And that's, we, we see this here in, in 2 Corinthians 13, and picking up in verse 3, Paul says, since you seek proof of Christ speaking in me. And, and he goes, goes on to say, who is not weak toward you, but mighty in you. For, through, uh, for though he was crucified in weakness, yet he lives by the power of God. For we also are weak in him, but we shall live with him by the power of God toward you. So he's saying, you seek proof that, that I'm actually a Christian, that I'm speaking, um, or that Christ is speaking in me. So that that's been a trouble that Paul has had with the church at Corinth. We've seen this the whole way through. Like I said, we're, we're coming to the end of the book now. Um, as we do that, Paul has, has defended himself over and over again, showing that Christ has been speaking in him, showing that he's got the apostolic authority that he, that he has, defending his position as an apostle against what he calls super apostles, saying, you know, you, you, you're mad because I haven't taken money from you. You're mad that I'm not like these other people. But the fact is, they're robbing you, and I haven't robbed you. He turns the tables now in verse 5, and he says, examine yourselves. You know, here we are at the end of the, this, this book where he's, he's defended himself. He goes, okay, how about this? Why don't you take a look at your own life? And I think that's an important thing for every single one of us to do. He goes, take a look at your own life. Examine yourself as to whether you're in the faith. I want to see if you're really a Christian. I think I've, I've proven over and over again that I'm a Christian. Why don't you take a look at your own life? Test yourselves, he says. Do you know or do you not know yourselves that Christ, that Jesus Christ is in you, unless indeed you are disqualified? But I trust that you will know that we are not disqualified. Yeah, I trust you're going to figure this out. I'm really a Christian. But why don't you take a look at your own life? And I, I think if people would do that more often, especially, you know, we have our times of communion where, where every time we go to communion, we think back to what God has had to save us from and what he saved us to that's a beautiful thing for us as Christians to do. John chapter 14, Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments and I will pray the father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. So there has to be this evidence there has to be this proof that you are indwelled with the Spirit, that you have, that you know Christ, and you are known by Christ, and that's what we want to talk about today. These these proofs, this way of examining ourselves, testing ourselves, and knowing that we truly have faith. Now we want to. We got seven of these, and I want to get through all of them. So we're going to take a quick break, listen to a word from our sponsor, and then we'll be right back after this. We are in a free speech war. With big tech, Biden is going after independent news that doesn't lockstep with them on COVID, shots, adverse effects, and early treatments. If you value Valley News' award-winning, unbiased journalism and community coverage without a left slant, please support us by going to myvalleynews.com forward slash subscribe and sign up for $5 a month. We can do this. Well, hey, everybody, welcome back to the second half of Our Watch. I am Tim Thompson. With me, as always, is Jake Porter. We're both pastors over at 412 Church in Temecula Valley, and we are talking today about testing ourselves, asking the question, am I really, truly a Christian? Because there, there really are so many people that, like I say, fly the banner of Christianity. I know you see that with the, the young people today, is they think they're a Christian, but they don't know how to really tell you why. Yeah. And that's the importance of this this reflection and this introspection that he's given here, right? It, it, like he, like you were talking about, he's been 
the the eye that or he's been the examination that everybody's focus has been on like oh well look at what are you doing what are you doing here well what about this what about this and now he's like you said flipping around a little okay well what about yourself right you know and how often that happens in our culture where we love to point out something in somebody else's life and, and say all these things and then it's like whoa, whoa, whoa let's back up right. what about ourselves and especially with younger people right you know they're they're very prone to that and that's what i love about this this introspection of okay well what about me Right. You know, what does my life look like? How, what is happening in my life that lets people know that I'm a Christian? Right. You know, the way you conduct yourself and when you're out in the world, people should be able to tell that person's right. different. Something's different about them. They might not know what it is sometimes, you know, in the eyes of the world, but you should look different. So what right. is it that actually is different? Right. Yeah. And we get seven tests, like se seven things that our audience can can examine their own self and, and find, do I have evidence? Is there enough evidence to convict me of being a Christian? Yeah. Uh, the first thing is this, I hate sin. Like if you're a Christian, you should rightly say, I hate sin. And we see this in Psalm, uh, the, the book of Psalms, Psalm number 97, verse 10 says, you who love the Lord hate evil. And it's not a, a statement of fact. It's a statement of command. It's, it's not, you who love the Lord hate evil as trying to describe a person who loves the Lord. It's you who love the Lord hate evil. It's a command to hate evil. And you, the, the hard part about that is there, there, as you examine yourself, that, that means there's a part of yourself you have to hate, which is counter to what our culture says. Our culture says you have to love yourself. Yeah. And what, what this does is, is you, if you, do love the Lord, you hate sin. Well, wait a minute, I sin. Oh, that means I, I, I don't like a certain part of me. Yeah. You know, and, and really the, the more mature I get in my faith, the more I hate sin and the more I hate sin in my own life, yeah. the more it disgusts me how prone I am to go against God. Yeah. And there's some action that should be inspired by that. Right. You hate sin. You hate this part of yourself. And it should be encouragement for this whole process called sanctification, where it's like, okay, well, I'm really going to try to be as not that I can be perfect, but I'm going to try to the best of my ability right. to live apart from sin. Right. And when I see sin in my culture, I'm going to do something about it. Right. Where I, okay. I can't live with that going on. So what am I going to do to be effective? Right. With that sin. Right. And yeah, you know, if you hate sin, you're going to see it in the culture, hate it in the culture, and you're not going to be content to allow it to continue in the culture. Yeah. You know, because, you know, when you hate something, you don't want it around you. Yeah. You know, so if, if you're if you're content with sin, you have to question, am I am I really truly a Christian? You know, um, a second thing is this. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Like if you can answer that question, are you ashamed of the gospel? Well, no. Well, then you might be a Christian. You know, yeah. um, we, we look at Romans chapter one, verse 16, Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of, of Christ for it. It is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. And then also in Luke chapter 12, it says, also, I, I say to you, whoever confesses me before men, him, the son of man also will confess before the angels of God. But he who denies me before men will be denied before the angels of God. So there, there is this call to the believer to confess Christ before people. Yeah. So in other words, you're supposed to declare your faith in him, declare your love from in front of people where we are, we are seen in our culture. People go, well, I don't, I don't talk about the Lord at work. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't talk with my friends on the soccer field about Jesus. Why? Well, you know, it's just, that's not, that's not where I do that. I do. I talk about Jesus at church. Well, if you're not willing to confess him, what he's saying is he's not willing to confess you. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, with something related to this, a, a good question to ask yourself, are you willing to look weird, weird in the eyes of the world in order to be a light in a dark place or in order to do something effective for the kingdom of God? Are you willing to think, to, to let people think, oh, what, like this guy's weird looking at him, like all this stuff that he's talking about Jesus, all these Jesus things that he's doing, all these things that he's, you know, doing in our culture. Are you willing to look weird to them in order to be effective for Christ? You know, and I think a lot of people are worried so much about what other people think about them. What is somebody right. going to say about me? What are my friends going to think? Why, you know, I need to fit in. Oh, I need this group of friends or whatever it is. And people are so concerned with, 
you know, oh, if I share the gospel, then, you know, I, this is going to happen or that's going to happen. You right. know, well, are you, then are you ashamed? Are you, are you ashamed of the gospel? Are you, right. Do you fear God more than man or do you fear man more than God? Do you fear what people think about you more than being effective for God or are you more concerned with being effective for God? Right. You know? Right. Yeah. You know, like you think about Mary, we're, we're married guys, you know, um, you're not ashamed of your wife. I'm not ashamed of my wife. You know, it'd be a weird thing for me to go to work at, at some company and never let anybody know I have a wife. Never talk about her, never never show pictures of her, never talk about my vacation that I went on with her. Never like that would be weird. Yeah. And and your wife if your wife showed up at work and people are like, Who are you? Oh, I'm Tim's wife. Like you know what I mean? Like if oh, if, I had no idea he was married. Oh, I didn't even know he's what? Yeah. Like you're are you ashamed? That would be the question. Are you ashamed of me? Why haven't you told anybody about me? You know? And we have to carry that that mindset into the workplace as well with Jesus. Does anybody know that you follow Jesus? Does anybody know that, that you wake up every morning and open his word and pray to him and talk to him and hear from him? Does anybody know that you go on missions for him and, and you go to a place to gather together to worship him? Does nobody know about this? Oh, no, that's work. What do you mean? So are you ashamed? Yeah. Because well, I, I, I mean, that's what my wife would ask. Are you ashamed of me? Why does nobody know? I think Jesus would ask the same thing. How come nobody knows about me? Yeah. I'd be willing to bet that many of those people who are doing that diligent time of study in the morning, intentionally building that relationship with Christ, intentionally doing those things, many of them probably are sharing those things. Sure. But you right. think about, okay, the people that aren't, well, are they are they spending that intentional yeah. time with Christ? And if they're not, they're probably not a Christian. That's the whole idea. Is that this is a way of testing ourselves. Yeah. Am I really a Christian? Because if you're a Christian, you're going to talk about them at work, even if your work says not to. Yeah. You're still going to talk about them. There's nothing's going to stop you from talking about your relationship with God. Nothing. Um, here's uh, here's another thing. Evidence that you're a Christian, you love people. Yep. And I've, I've heard people who who claim to be Christian and go, yeah, but I don't I don't like people. I just I don't I don't like people at all. People, I, I do everything I can to stay away from them. Well, then you don't you don't really love God because you can't say you love God but hate people. In fact, John chapter thirteen says, "By all by this all will know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another." They're not going to know you're a disciple because you have a, a Jesus is my my homeboy T shirt, yeah. you know, or a, a church bumper sticker, or you carry a Bible with you. They're not going to know by that. According to Jesus, they're going to know because you have love one for another. Yeah. And we live in a culture that no longer has love for one another. Right. Yeah. You know, not even, not even close. Yeah. You know, you, anybody disagrees with somebody in our culture. Oh, it's the, you know, they, they can't get along. Right. They can't even, you know, they can't stand each other. We should have a genuine love. And, and what comes with love is the truth. Right. Right. You love somebody to the point where, hey, I, I can't I, I love you so much that I need to tell you the truth. Right. You might not like it, but I love you enough to tell you. Right. Right. Here's another thing. If you are a Christian, you're going to regularly talk to God. Prayer is going to be a common thing for you. And first uh, Thessalonians chapter five, verse 17, we're told to pray without ceasing. Now, I've often kind of jokingly said this, that Bible verse doesn't mean that you quit your job, sell your house, get out into the wilderness on your knees, pray to God and just sit there and pray until you die. That's not what praying without ceasing means. The whole idea of praying without ceasing is you have a continuous open dialogue with God, always ready to talk to him, always ready to listen to him. You know, I, I talk to my wife without ceasing. Yeah. You know, she can come to me anytime. I go to her at any time. She's always willing to listen. I'm always willing to listen. It's that simple. We have an open line of communication, and we regularly talk to each other. And how weird would it be for, for somebody to say, you know, when was the last time you had a conversation with your wife? And me to go, ah, you know, it's been a couple years. <laughs> like weird, right? I mean, yeah. That's not a relationship. Yep. If you have a relationship with somebody, you talk to them, and you hear from them. And I've had people go, well, you know, I just I haven't heard from God. In a long time. Well, that's weird. Like, you have open I, your Bible? Yeah. Open your Bible. He has yeah. much to say. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he sure does. And that's what, what people, at least, you know, like I, I'm with the junior hires and high schoolers a lot, and they uh, have trouble with that sometimes, understanding that it's a conversation. 
right? They're, they're either big on the prayer part and then they don't read their Bible or they're reading their Bible and they're not praying. And right. I'm like, well, it's a, a, you know, by large, that's the, the, most common way that God communicates with right. us. It's a, it's a two way street. It's, it'd be weird if I said to you, Oh, Hey, how's it going? And then you just sat there and didn't respond. Yeah. Like, okay, well, I guess not. You know, right. that would be weird. So it's yeah. like, Oh, you know, you're, you're praying to God. Well, he's got much to say to you. It'd be like not letting right. him talk to you. Okay. Now open up his word. What does he have to say back? Yeah. You know, it's a conversation. Right. Yeah. You know, I've talked to, to people who say, I really want to hear from God, but I just, I don't, I've never heard from God. And I, I've talked to some, one man in particular, just recently when we were doing this message, um, he had just recently, he had, he'd been in the pews for 10 years. Like he'd been at the church for 10 years and just recently gave his life to the Lord after a decade of being there. And, and he's, he's saying, you know, I, I, I struggled because I didn't know how to hear God you know, and I hear a lot of Christians that say that, you know, I, I'm a Christian, but I, I've never really heard the voice of God. Well, the, the, the fact is you're not a Christian then. If you have not, because here's what Jesus said, my sheep will know my voice. Mm -hmm. So if you don't know his voice, you're not his sheep, right? I mean, that's what Jesus said. My sheep will know my voice. So if you say, I don't know his voice, then you're not a sheep. Yeah. Um, we as believers need to have an open line of communication with him and we need to know his voice. Yep. It's that simple. Um, here's another thing. We share our faith with others. Yep. You know, it's in this kind of goes in line with the whole, um, I'm not ashamed, but, but it takes that whole, I'm not ashamed a step further and, and puts it into active form. Now I'm, I'm, I'm not ashamed of it. And because I'm not ashamed of it, I am going out and trying to, to share it. Here's what it says in Ezekiel chapter 18. I have, I have no pleasure in the death of one who dies, says the Lord, therefore turn and live. He, if that's God's heart, he doesn't want people to die. He wants people to know where they, you know, how they can have eternal life. Then we should want that. We should be out sharing that with people. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm not sure if you gave me the st statistic or where it came from, but with born again adults, right? People that have accepted Christ, uh, according to Barna research, 55% have claimed to share their faith, uh, in Christ with a non-Christian in the last 12 months. So amongst yeah. believers, only just over half. half. Yeah. That means almost half are not. Yeah. That's a problem. That, a major problem, yeah. you know? Yeah. We're supposed to go out and let people know. Here, I, you have no hope. Let me give you some hope. Well, if only half of Christians, it, we're, we're living in a nation where, where believers are, are starting Diminishing. to diminish. Yeah. Let alone only half of those who do believe are actually out doing it. That right. doesn't leave a whole, whole lot of people doing this. Right. Right. Um, we got two more and we, we don't have much time left. So here's another one. Evidence that I'm a Christian, my excitement for heaven grows every day. Colossians chapter three, verses one and two. If then you were raised in Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on the things of earth. And I, and I paint this picture. So, you know, there are, there are times when my wife and I will schedule a family vacation and we'll schedule it out a year in advance. And when we first schedule it out, we're so excited. Like, okay, we're going on this vacation. This is where we're going. This is when we're going. And then life happens and we start to, you know, we, we, we forget that we got that vacation coming up in a year because the distractions of everything, you know, and then a couple months later, we're like, oh, that's right. That's right. We got this vacation coming up and we start thinking it and, and we, as we get closer and closer, it becomes more on our mind. We get more excited about where we're going on vacation and the week of that's all I think about is this is where I'm going. And, and it's that way with the believers, the more, the closer you get to the end of your life, the more you're thinking about where you're headed Yeah. and your excitement for heaven is going to grow. We got one final thing. This is a test of, am I a Christian? And the, the, the question is, are you a slave to fear? And if you are a Christian, you are no longer a slave to fear. Second Timothy one seven, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. Yep. Absolutely. We we can't be fearful. Right. You can't be a, a believer and be fearful here in yeah. this world. You have the the power of the one true living God living inside of you. Right. That's greater than anything on this earth. There's nothing for us to fear. Right. Right. Except for God Himself. That's it. True. Then we're good. Yeah. All right. That's all the time we have. Pastor Jake, thanks for joining me. Yeah. Thank you for having me. All right. Evidence that you are a Christian. Test yourself. Examine yourself. We hope that you truly are. God bless you. We'll see you next time right here on Our Watch with Tim Thompson. 
This has been a production of Our Watch with Tim Thompson. We hope you're encouraged to engage the culture around you. We want to invite you to connect with Pastor Tim by going to the Connect page on ourwatch.com. That's O-U-R watch.com. Until next time, this is all of us at Our Watch reminding you to be bold, be strong, and to take back the public square.